anemia. That is the congestive heart failure. Now, if you, uh, when you are, we are seeing the woman uh, who is pregnant and has come to our antenatal clinic, obviously first we take the full history and uh, we calculate uh, the estimated date of delivery and also we uh, take the uh, history of present pregnancy. So in this, if we, uh, from the history, we, we can uh, see uh, if the patient is, uh, has any risk factors that she could be anemic. So again, age, parity would tell if she have had many pregnancies and there was less interval between the pregnancies. What is her diet? Any history of any chronic bleeding? For example, she was having bleeding during uh, in the last pregnancy, antepartum hemorrhage or postpartum hemorrhage, or maybe her periods are very heavy. A history of any worm infestation, chronic malaria, and which race does she belong? Then when we will examine, we could see if there is, again, depending on the type of anemia, if it's uh, uh, moderate or severe, we could see the patient is pale, there is glossitis, splenomegaly, jaundice. These are mostly in hemolytic anemia, purpurea, and uh, evidence of chronic disease, and NSRCA and signs of cardiac failure in severe cases. So depending when you take the history and when you examine, and then you would know that there is uh, the mother is anemic and we need to do a workup. So what investigations will we do? Uh, depending on the uh, basic uh, first test is to know that uh, we do the blood complete picture and important is to know the hemoglobin and hematocrit. So it is noted at first visit, then 28 to 30 weeks and then at 36 weeks. Sometimes we need to get repeated. For example, if the mother was anemic and we have prescribed her any medication. So maybe uh, we would like to have, again, uh, check her hemoglobin levels in between these uh, gestations. Like between 30 and 36 weeks, maybe at 32 weeks or 34 weeks, we would uh, advise her to bring her hemoglobin level on next antenatal follow-up. Also, this is important because when we get the uh, hemoglobin and the blood complete picture, we would know what type of anemia is it. Is it microcytic, hypochromic? Is it macrocytic? Is it diamorphic picture? Normocytic? Is it hemolytic? Or it is pancytopenia when all the cell lines are decreased. Now, what is reticulocyte count? Reticulocyte count is normal is 2 to 2.2 to 2% and that is giving the response of what how the bone marrow is uh, responding. So, uh, and it is seen high bone marrow activity is seen in hemolytic anemia following acute blood loss and iron deficiency anemia on treatment. So, cause of anemia as I mentioned earlier could be identified by various investigations. So, this you can see uh, on the uh, top, uh, you can see there is iron deficiency anemia, and you can see the pictures of hypochromic and macrocytic. And then uh, in the right side is thalassemia. We could see the target cells. Then you could see the blast cells, sickle cells. You can see um, in the case of sickle cell disease. So that is the blood picture is very important because that would give you an idea what type of anemia is it, and then you will know how to treat that anemia. And also sometimes you could even see a malaria parasite on the blood picture. And in the bone marrow, if it's a aplastic anemia, then you can uh, see uh, that picture. So normal smear is normal cytic, that is normal size of uh, red blood cells and normal chromic, normal color of red blood cells. In the iron deficiency, as you can see in the picture, the microcytic, there is small red blood cells, they are hypochromic, there is pale, there would be variation in the size, and so cytosis, and variation in the shape, poikilocytosis, with or without the target cells. Malaria parasite can be seen. In the aplastic anemia, this shows either low or no count. Sickle cell, again, sickle cells you can see. Toxic granulins can be seen. And abnormal blast cells in case of leukemia, and target cells in thalassemia. So what happens to the red cell indices? Because these are the indices which would tell us red, red blood cell count decreases in anemia. Uh, then also the packed cell volume also that is uh, less than 32. Mean corpuscular volume which is low in iron deficiency anemia. 
because that is telling about the size microcity mean corpuscular hemoglobin also decreases and mchc also decreases which is one of the most sensitive indices and of for the anemia that is a mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration now special depending on these first you see the blood picture and then you get the indices then you would order if you see this picture of iron deficiency then you will order serum ferritin levels serum iron levels that would be decreased in case of iron deficiency anemia serum iron binding capacity that would increase percentage saturation of transferrin decreases to less than 20% in iron deficiency anemia and rbc protoporphyrin also it can double or triple in iron deficiency anemia but the last two are uh, are less uh, uh, prescribed uh, investigations the first three are the most common when we detect that it's a case of iron deficiency anemia so again you, these are the normal values and you can see that in iron deficiency all three are reduced but mchc could be normal if you are uh, in some cases of thalassemia so this is a range with with the normal values and what what happens in the iron deficiency and in thalassemia other investigations we talked about we could do the urine examination again to see if there has been any urinary tract infection red blood cells or cas stool examination to see any occult blood or ova bone marrow examination if it is a refractory anemia or if you can uh, see that all the cell lines are decreased and uh, x-ray chest uh, pulmonary tuberculosis blood urea nitrogen or serum platelet if you are suspecting any renal disease now coming up to the treatment for iron deficiency anemia as we are talking about we have talked about that iron deficiency again most important is to improve the diet and the diet should be rich in iron and fruits and leafy vegetables plus we need to treat the worm infestation maintain general hygiene food fortification with iron and genetic modification of food is also an idea like for example in a wheat or in atta you can add some iron or in other diet which is the staple foods you can add and that is called the food fortification then iron and folic acid supplementations should be given in the young girls even before they get pregnant and especially during pregnancy heme iron is better present in the animal food and is better absorbed iron absorption what are the enhancers of iron absorption they are the citrus food vitamin c and what are the factors which decrease are the tea coffee calcium phyt uh, phytates phosphates oxalates and uh, uh, cereals with iron because usually uh, with with calcium and tea and coffee these are the inhibitors of iron absorption so we talked about that these are the uh, uh, food which are rich in iron so as we uh, are the the iron supplementation in pregnancy is 60 mg of elemental iron 400 micrograms of folic acid Yeah, is a daily requirement during pregnancy and three months thereafter. In anemia, the therapeutic doses are increased to 180 to 200 milligrams per day. The route of administration depends on the severity of anemia, gestational age, compliance, and tolerability of iron. This is very important. For example, uh, if a lady uh, comes and she is pregnant at about maybe fifth month, that you know, 20 weeks, and you see that she has moderate anemia. Her hemoglobin levels is nine or eight uh, grams. So then you know that this she still has a time uh, before she delivers, and if she hasn't started any oral iron, then you can prescribe her oral iron, and also uh, then you can continue and you can follow. But for example, at this same gestation, she comes with the hemoglobin of less than uh, uh, four or five, maybe in, in in the category of severe anemia. Then obviously you would need to transfuse. Uh, blood so, and then for example a woman who has been taking iron in spite of that she she is not able to tolerate iron then you might need to give either intramuscular iron injections or uh, intravenous uh, to build up her hemoglobin levels and also to build up her stores 
There are various preparations, fumarate, gluconate, succinate, sulfate, and ascorbonate. Oral iron can have side effects like nausea, vomiting, gastritis, diarrhea, and constipation. Iron supplementation, usually we don't recommend the first trimester. It is usually given from the start of the second trimester. So, oral iron, uh, if there is hemoglobin, as we talked about, 8 to 11, early pregnancy, then you can give oral iron. Contraindication would be if there is intolerance to oral iron, if there is severe anemia and advanced pregnancy, and the patient is non-compliant. How would you know if there is failure to respond? Then, uh, then you, what do you do? You first have to see whether it was iron deficiency or maybe it could be some like folic acid deficiency or B12 deficiency. So you have to see if your diagnosis was accurate, if there is faulty absorption, if there has been a continuous blood flow, blood loss, coexistent infection, that's why the anemia is not being corrected, or if there is associated folate or B12 deficiency. The indicators of response to therapy would be feeling of well-being, improved look of patient, better appetite, rise in the hemoglobin level, and reticular side count would also rise in 7 to 10 days. That would give you the bone marrow response. Parental iron therapy, that is the iron sucrose, is the form which is given in the parental use. And the dose is calculated by a formula, that is weight in the kilogram of the mother into iron deficit, that is, for example, here hemoglobin is 8, so you would minus from 11, that would be 3. 3 multiplied by 2.2 plus 1000 milligrams for the iron stores. So that would give you the calculated dose. This and the response again by increasing the hemoglobin level about 1 gram per week. And also you could check from the retic count that it increases in 5 to 10 days. Plus if there is increase in improvement in the clinical symptoms. Indications for blood transfusion would be if there is a severe anemia, first seen after 36 weeks of anemia of pregnancy, but that could be earlier even also. Anemia due to acute blood loss, APH or postpartum hemorrhage, associated infections, patient not responding to the oral or the parental therapy, plus if she has any symptoms, severe symptoms like dyspnea with heart failure, then you need to transfuse blood. If the anemic woman comes in labor, then labor needs to be supervised. First of all, our aim should be that no woman should be anemic when she comes to labor. If she is coming for regular antenatal checkup, then we need to advise her properly about diet, about iron therapy. We need to follow up by checking her hemoglobin levels and good counseling is important. So when she is when she is in labor, we are not worried about uh, her if there is a loss then then she would be able to compensate that blood loss if her hemoglobin levels are good but for example when if the woman comes then the labor should be supervised proper counseling and consent needs to be taken blood hole and uh, especially fat cell should be arranged and cross matched women should be nursed in a proper position intermittent oxygen needs to be given precaution to prevent prevention infection and blood loss strict eight aseptic precautions and minimal vaginal examinations during labor. Prophylactic antibiotics can be given and IV line should be there and fluids should be, IV fluids should be avoided or restricted. And in decompensated patient, you need to give diuretics so that she doesn't go into congestive heart failure. The second and the third stage of labor, second stage need to shorten by 14-16 to 